Der erste Vortrag jetzt von Matt Hamilton, ähm, eine Case Study über carclassintranet.de. Der Vortrag wird in Englisch sein und äh, ja, ich wünsche viel Spaß. Dankeschön. Morning everybody. Thank you for being here at 9 o'clock in the morning. I know this is probably, probably the hardest slot to be here for. Um, I'm afraid my voice might be a little, uh, a little funny today from all of the talking and drinking last night. But uh, anyway, so what I'm going to talk about today is a case study of a large intranet that we have implemented. And uh, who here has heard of Carglass? Carglass repariert, Carglass austauscht, yeah? Genau. Um, they have the same advert everywhere in the world. They just translate it. So, um, auto glass repair, auto glass replace. I'm never going to be a singer, but uh, they do this in every country. Their parent company is a company called Belron, and Belron own the various bits of auto glass. So I'm going to, I'm going to, and car glass. So I'll explain this more in a little bit. Firstly, who, who are NetSite? Who am I? Um, NetSite's company based in the UK, in a city called Bristol. Um, we're 13 people. Um, we build various you know, web projects for people. And in 2006, we were approached uh, by Belron. Well, we went for a, a competitive tender, and we were tendering against several other CMS systems commercial systems and some open source. Uh, from the open source, there was Pwn in Typo 3 and a whole bunch of ones from the commercial world. And uh, they came, we all came in and did a demo, and in the end, they decided to go with Pwn. Fantastic. <clears throat> so, Belron is the world's largest vehicle glass repair and replacement company, owning some of the best known brands, Car Glass, obviously you know, Auto Glass. In Australia, they're known as O'Brien, in the US are known as Safe Flight. They employ more than 25,000 people in 33 countries. And they replace a windscreen or repair a windscreen somewhere in the world every three seconds. Right? Um, they're pretty big. They've got a turnover of about three, milli uh, three billion euros. So today, what I'm going to talk about is the intranet. Um, however, these days, things have evolved. And calling it the intranet might just be um, a simple thing, you know, really. Maybe it should be called the enterprise social collaborative digital workplace because everybody thinks that intranet should do so much more, which, yeah, they, they should do. So I'm going to refer to it as the intranet still. Um, so what does this look like? What, is the, what does the intranet look like? Now, <clears throat> there's... Originally, we did the site for Belron, the parent company, and they're based in the UK, and the internet we did for them was for their top-level management uh, staff, based in the UK, but also worldwide. But then they have separate intranets for their various brands, uh, for organizational reasons. So after we did the Belron uh, UK website, we also then went on to do the Carglass Belux website, Carglass Switzerland, Carglass Spain, Carglass Germany that I'm going to show you a bit of. And uh, it's also the same code base is used by O'Brien in Australia, taken over by a couple of the Australian companies <coughs> and, and used out there. So it's, it, it was the same code base. Well, it, it is the same code base and it isn't the same code base. Um, this is uh, just a screenshot of Carglass's uh, uh, intranet once you log in. Now, originally the first Belron intranet was built on top of Plone 2.5 and then the car glass intranets which were done later on were done on Plone 3. Then more recently we have upgraded the Belron site from 2.5 to Plone 4 and we're now going through the process of upgrading the other sites, the car glass sites. I was hoping to be here to say, to say that um, that intranet is Plone 4 but unfortunately, that intranet is not Plan 4, it's Plan 3 um, at the moment. But hopefully soon it will be Plan 4. So <coughs> what I'm actually going to now switch to and show you mainly is the, the features of the site on the Plan 4 version. So although I said car glass, 
most of this will actually be branded Belron, which is the UK site. But it's the same, like I said, it's the code, same code base that'll be going on all sites. So what sort of things do we have on here? Um, we have things like status updates. So you can see here, um, zoom in of a status update. Um, there's a, a couple of links at the bottom here. There's a link here, you probably can't see it, that says my status down at the bottom. Um, update profile, this bar at the bottom stays here the whole time. And it's a sort of a Twitter or Yammer style microblogging system. This was built before uh, the excellent work from uh, Jorgios and the other guys at JARN on the XMPP microblogging stuff um, that they've been working on. And if you haven't seen that, it's, it's really quite impressive, actually. So it's something we might move to at a later date. Uh, they are using, they've got a system that, as well as doing microblogging, allows you to actually do uh, simultaneous live editing of pages. It's really quite impressive um, to see a demo of it, to see two people on different computers editing the same page and the same content and seeing each other's edits um, live. It, uh, the, the microblogging thing suggests who you might like to follow and uh, says who you are following. And a lot of this is based upon what it knows about you within the organization. So it knows what uh, departments you're in, what functional groups you are in within the organization. So it's basing some of those decisions uh, based upon that. And so it shows who you're following there. You've got status updates on the side there as to, to what's going on. And you can comment on status updates. So somebody can put a status update on and you can comment. So it's a bit like you know, replying to somebody on Twitter, but I suppose a bit more like a Facebook wall in a way in that it, it's, a, it's a threaded discussion uh, that stays there. And so people can, can post a comment. They can even do things like attach a file. So you can attach a file to a comment uh, on, a, on a discussion going on there. They've got forums on there. This is uh, the uh, technical portal. And so, for instance, these people are out there replacing glass on vehicles. And there's ver various technical considerations and questions they might have. They need a particular adhesive to work with a particular vehicle with a particular type of glass. Then they can ask that on here. Um, and actually, what happens is when they ask a question, because a lot of these people are actually out in the field, they're, they're out working, replacing windscreens by the side of the road, they can actually access this by a mobile device and they can ask a question on there and if they tick the important flag, then it will actually send an SMS out to the other engineers who are out and say, I really need you know, this, this problem solved now and uh, they can respond to it. And once the answer is, is uh, come back, after a while, that can then be sort of promoted to be best practice. So they've got like an FAQ system built in as well. So as these questions come in there, they're archived, and it's a, it's a searchable system. <clears throat> they have uh, a blog on there. Uh, so this is the social media blog, um, of course. Uh, but they, the CEO has a blog on there and, and, and that kind of thing. So um, that's probably not necessarily all that exciting. It's fairly, fairly uh, an obvious thing. Um, and things like polls. So they can put polls on there. They can download the results of the polls. So it means that people within the organization can very easily, quickly get a, uh, you know, a census or a judgment on a particular topic. So I'm now going to briefly talk a little bit about the rationale behind this and talk a bit about uh, social media in general within the enterprise. Um, so there's tools that people are used to using every day, generally in their home life. Um, they're tools that people are familiar with. And nowadays users are a lot more enlightened within an organization, within a corporation or an institution or wherever it is. And more and more, they don't want to use that old piece of software that IT installed on their system three years ago that's really slow and cumbersome, you know. Uh, they, they can do Facebook and it's really quick, you know, at home. They can go and they can put an update and everybody can see it. Why can't their IT system be that good? So it's now a case, whereas previously people used to have better systems at work than at home, it's now a case they've 
generally got better systems at, at home that have worked. And that's also uh, generating a large uh, trend towards bringing your own devices to work. So it used to be a case that you had a work laptop and maybe a work mobile phone. But again, nowadays people are like, well, I don't want that Nokia 3300. You know, I want my iPhone. Um, so more and more devices are being brought in. Pe people are, are used to that. And so really it's a case of giving them the tools that they, they're used to. Forrester Research did some study into why people, the, the type of people that share information, the type of people that use social media, and they've broken it down into seven categories. <coughs> Mommy. And this is true for both inside and outside the organization, both, both in the enterprise and outside. So you've got people like creators. These are the people that actually um, make the, the, the social content that is consumed by others. These are people that are actually posting the information uh, on there. You've got the critics. These are the people that rate and review what other people have said. Uh, they comment on blogs. They participate in forums. They, they, they give a lot of feedback. You've got the spectators. These are the people that just watch. You know, They just go and see what's going on. Um, they, they, they might not get particularly engaged, but they want to find out what everybody's doing. The conversationalists. These are people that are, they want to have conversations. Often they want to have conversations for the sake of having conversations. Um, but they, they want to communicate, uh, they want to voice their opinions. Joiners, these are the people uh, who want to be in as many groups as possible. They, you know, they want to join everything and find out what's going on you know, everywhere. They visit many different sites. They're always on the, whatever the newest thing is. Collectors, they like to use things like RSS um, and aggregation tools to, to bring content together. They like to vote on content uh, using sites like Dig and Reddit and things like that. They tag photos and web page. The, um, the sort of librarian type people that like to organize things. And then, then you've got the inactives. These are people that just, they, they really don't care. You know, why, why is this my job? Um, why do I have to do this? Um, this is, is of no interest to me. But looking back, what is it that we actually want to achieve with this? Um, what, are the, what are the goals for social media within the enterprise? So people want um, to create content quickly. You know, the, the idea of user-generated content. They want quick communication. And they want interaction between groups of users that, that is not generally possible. You know, they want to get people within different groups to be able to, uh, to communicate together. And put sort of more succinctly, uh, establishing and maintaining a connection amongst users, facilitating the mechanics of conversation and collaboration. It's a bit of a grand statement, but that's the, that's, that's the goal. That's why we're doing it. Um, that's the reason for having these, these social features on an intranet. But why do we actually share? I mean, why do people want to share? I mean, you can, within an enterprise, you can tell somebody it's their job, but unless they actually feel that they want to do it, then they're not going to be really involved in it. So looking at outside of the enterprise, um, you know, in people's homes lives, they want, to, they want to strengthen bonds. They want to become a bit more of an identity with people. They want to build a relationship. They've, they've met somebody once before. They want to keep a conversation going um, and build that relationship further. They want to define a collective identity. You know, I want to you know, chat with other people who like whatever football team or um, you know, like whatever car or whatever it might be. And they, they, they want to build some identity around that. And they want to gain status. You know? They want to have the most Facebook followers. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of competition, a little bit of one-upmanship there. Within the enterprise, the first two are, are, are desirable. You, you want the first two there. But do you want to gain status? Do you want people to have this sort of competition going on? You know, you've created this intranet with people using it. Uh, do, do you really want it to just be, I want as many followers as possible in the internet? What purpose does that serve? So you probably don't want a popularity contest, um, but you do possibly want people to gain status as being knowledgeable in a particular t topic or a particular area. Again, going back to why we're doing this, that's why you want to be able to do this. Uh, second point, governance is essential. So Nielsen defined five 
levels of governance, five key roles of governance within an organization. <coughs> so you've got the new media team. You know, this is what used to be the, 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 the lone sole webmaster and their responsibility. Well, nowadays, you know, this, this is a bigger thing within, within organizations. The new media team, they're, they're the people that are responsible for things like the user experience, consultation, um, the technology training, advising, that kind of thing. You've got the site content managers. They create the content. They review the content. This is the distributed publishing. These are the people, that the end users that are using, in this case, Plone, to do this. You've got internal comms. These are the people that are the brand guardians. These are the people that maintain the the coherent voice and, and look and feel of the organization in terms of what they're publishing. You know, they have top level review of the publishing. You've got the steering team. This is the high level involvement. People from communications, IT, HR, marketing. They, they, they manage the, the higher level goals. They probably meet monthly. They have some sort of um, like, uh, well, steering group meeting it's normally called and they, they, they meet monthly. And then right at the very top, you've got the executive, the long term strategy. That's the, the people that allocate funding, they discuss initiatives with the steering team, and they, they, they meet quarterly. You really need involvement at all of those levels to make these things succeed, to make an intranet, uh, especially a social intranet, work within an organization. Now, obviously, it's not one size fits all, and in different organizations, you will have a different mix, and you'll have like cross-department ownership. And it might not be that you have five distinct people or five distinct teams of people in a small organization um, the steering team and the executive might be the same, or the new media team and the site content creators might be the same. But you need to be aware that you have those separate roles, and they all need to be covered. This becomes even more important when you allow everybody in your organization to contribute. Of course, originally, if you'd look sort of back a few years, a traditional intranet, in, intranet was information that was published from the central comms team, say, or the HR department, out to the rest of the, the user, the rest of the organization. Now we're talking about social media within an within a intranet. We're talking about allowing everybody to contribute. So this is where governance starts to become a lot more important, because five years ago only three people contributed. Now you've got you know, everybody contributing. And you've got to lead by example. So Gary Lubner, he's the uh, CEO of Belron. Um, you need somebody to sit down in front of a very busy CEO and say, this is what needs to be done. If you've got a blog on here, this needs to be, this needs to be written. Does the CEO write the blog themselves? Maybe, maybe not. But, uh, you know, somebody needs to be there and, and pushing it. But you've got to recognize that success doesn't happen overnight. So looking at the, uh, the total hits from all users on the site, this is, again, this is the Belron site, um, and that's the total number of uh, hits from users. The green line is where we launched the new site with the, the social features. And you see there's an initial peak there, but it does, it does slightly drop off again. Um, unique content viewed by all users. Again, you see a, um, a trend just afterwards. <coughs> this is a graph called the Diffusion of Innovations graph by a guy called Rogers. And it, it it defines the rate at which people actually adopt a technology or a service. So you start off with the innovators, the people right at the front that want to be there that start off um, doing stuff. Uh, you then get the early adopters, and you move on, early majority, late majority, and the laggards. And it falls within a bell curve, right? But it's, it's, it's cumulative. So the blue line shows the, the rough distribution. But as it adds up, you can see that's the, the yellow line there as this builds up. At the moment, with this particular site, you know, and the social features, we're, we're right there at the start. Um, and there's currently only about 10 or f um, 5 or 10 percent of the users that are actually engaging on this particular site as creators. And looking at the actual engagement of the uh, active social media users, so looking here, the top line is the people that are actively using the social media features of the site, and the lower line is, the, is all of the other users. And Measuring their engagement on the site, you can see that when we, uh, when we launched, 
was about there when we launched the new features, there was a big jump. But it's happened on both cases, for both the social media users and the non-social media users. And you might say, well, okay, so why do we, why do we really bother since it's, you know, everybody's using it anyway and maybe there's no real, uh, no real benefit there. But what's actually happened is that the, the, all the other users are being effectively brought along by the active media users. So the active media users are putting more stuff in there, but the, the passive users are also being more engaged as a result of that. Gartner's hype cycle, you may have seen this. Um, you start off with the trigger, the peak of inflated inspect, uh, in expectation, the trough of disillusionment when you realize that whatever it was doesn't quite do what you wanted to do. Slowly you build up the slope of enlightenment and then the plateau of productivity. In reality, um, the plateau of productivity sort of tails off uh, into boredom. But what you actually want to do is you actually want to, to, to chain these together and build up and release features slowly. And that's what we were doing with the site. We were bringing in more and more of the, the social features bit by bit to kind of keep people interested uh, rather than just go with one, one big bang there. Think about mobile. This is the vision according to, to, to Apple. It's not to scale. Production on your desktop, consumption on your iPad, communication on your iPhone. It's also the same, uh, uh, the same sort of vision that Microsoft are also uh, talking about. But the problem being is that obviously screen sizes are totally different. This is to scale. That's the resolution there. Fingers are imprecise. You know, there's no hover state yet on a phone. It doesn't know that you're, you're, you're standing there hovering. Left and right navigation columns have, have, have issues. If you're holding a phone a particular way, if you're left or right-handed. Um, typically, you know, most sites have the navigation down the left. Well, most people are right-handed. That means you've got to reach your thumb right the way across the screen, and you're probably going to tap on everything else. We built a specific interface for Belron.net, so uh, here's some screenshots, iOS and um, uh, BlackBerry. Measuring success is complex, um, but let's celebrate it. You know, hits alone is not a complete, perfect measure of success. That's Nielsen's equation of what success means. Wow, scary. Um, but really, you know, go for something simpler. You know, we can complete this task, this quicker, um, you know, 30% faster, or, you know, unsuccessful searches are decreased by 70%. You kind of need figures for before and after in order to make this work. Obviously, that's sometimes really difficult because quite often before doesn't exist. Um, there's nothing to compare it to that you can't compare like with like or the change is so, so different that it's, um, you know, your metrics can be, can be skewed. There's various things you can do, things like page ratings. Um, I didn't show that on the site, but users can rate pages, you know. I think this is, this is useful. Uh, comments are useful. Users can comment on the site, uh, comment on the pages, take that feedback back. But really, it's, it's a whole load of things, uh, and in many cases it comes down to um, so think, you know, page ratings, comments, uh, user satisfaction surveys, et cetera. But it really comes back to just get out and talk to people. You need to talk to people within your organization about your intranet, uh, about what actually makes it successful for them, what they like about it, what could be better about it. Because you can sit there behind a screen and look at numbers all day, but that quite often doesn't tell the real picture. So thank you very much. It's a, uh, a whistle stop door. And uh, any questions? Can I flag it? Yeah. Yes, uh, my question is about the, the commenting system with the file attachment stuff. Uh, you did this with Plone 3? This is a new one, Plon4. You're using the new commenting system, and you have uh, plugged in some some uh, additions, or uh, or it's no, a proprietary. In that case, I don't think we're using a new commenting system because at the time this was built, that wasn't really just because this was we started building that just before Plon4 zero came. Yes. Out, so it wasn't really there yet. But, um, yeah. okay. Any other questions? When you showed the graph of the diffusion of innovation, um, you assumed implicitly that you have um, the same distribution of adopters in the in 
in the private sector as in the co in the corporate sector, right? So you say um, my employees are at the same amount, for example, <coughs> early majority as they are, for example, in in the free world. Um, why do you think that? Well, in this case, this is really just a general graph to illustrate the principle in terms of the actual amounts themselves. Um, the specifics are going to be obviously slightly different within, within an organization outside uh, or outside of an organization because, yes, there's external factors you know, involved. You, know, you might have a boss that says, you must do this. But this is the sort of, I suppose, the, the natural distribution that people will fall into um, within this. And it's really just to illustrate the fact that you know, you might go ahead and do something, and you might think that's had no effect. You know, nobody, nobody cares about this, and it's, it's a case of it may t it might take a while for that um, usage to to build up and people to get comfortable with those features. And that was again partly the reason why you want to be doing things like this and bringing new features bit by bit because you you know you you bring that up rather than just one big boom that then tails off. Okay. Dankeschön.